Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. In this one there is several Russian advances in the Luhansk Kharkiv border as well as in the Kurokhova section both in the northern and southern flanks of it. The Russians have also gained a foothold in Velika Novosilka. Zooming in on Velika Novosilka we see that the Russians have gained a foothold in the eastern outskirts of the settlement taking control over the main road leading into Velika Novosilka through the Volodar direction. With this, the Russians have a road and supply line that is connected from Volnovera here in the south, going through the main highway, going through Olhinka and through towards Velika Novosilka. Volnovera has a rail connection between it and Mariupol. This means that the Russians have a strong supply line going to and from Volnovera through the maritime route from Rostov. There's also a land route between Rostov and Mariupol. So based on this, the Russians have a solid supply line going directly towards Velika Novosilka, and this is exactly what has allowed the Russians to make this many gains here in this section of the front line. Following the capture of Vladar, the main bastion of the Ukraine defenses in the area was captured, allowing the Russians to hold the high ground. And from that, with proper supplies, the Russians are able to develop offensive operations from that as a springboard. At the same time, there's also a highway connection between Donetsk and Volodar, going through the Olhinka as well, and then all the way towards Velika Novosilka. Therefore, this one highway here can supply the Russian forces within the settlement. With the foothold gained within Velika Novosilka, the Russians will fight in between the river lines to the south and to the north of the settlement. At the same time, there are some crossings like the main road here through the Shaitenka River, as well as the bridge just south of it, and a bridge to the northern direction, which will allow the Russians to gain control over the southern parts of Velika Novosilka with several crossings. On top of that, the Russians can use pontoon bridges as well. Gaining control of this will cut off the Ukrainian forces south of it from any supplies as Russians are present in the south and east of this, meaning the only crossing would be to the west between that and Makarivka, Doroshevo and so on. And from there, the Russians also have a crossing towards Vremivka from the main parts of Velika Novosilka and from the southern direction. This means that although there are several rivers within Velika Novosilka, isolating every part of the settlement from each other. The Russians are able to cross over from several crossings or they can set up pontoon bridges or simply cross the rivers themselves without any of the bridges as many of the Russian vehicles are amphibious like the BMDs and BMPs. Examples of such is the BMD-4, the BMP-2 and 3 which are widely used in the Russian army. The BTR-80 is also a widely used vehicle that is fully amphibious, which the Russians can use to cross rivers. The Russians have over a thousand BTR-80 and a thousand BTR-82s, which means the Russians have plenty of abilities to cross over any of the river lines. Based on this, the largest hindrance to further Russian advances is naturally the Ukrainian defensive positions, both the fortified positions in the heights northwest of Velika Novosilka, as well as the Ukrainian defensive positions within the settlements and the fortified positions in the area to the south and western flanks of Velika Novosilka, which the Russians have yet to capture. The Russians must capture the roads here west of Vremivka if they want to secure Velika Novosilka and cut off the pocket located south of the settlement. Otherwise, they may not get as much success from the capture of the settlement as otherwise could have been possible. In comparison, the Ukrainians must withdraw from these settlements south of Velika Novosilka as they are in extreme danger of encirclement. Withdrawing to the fortified positions west of Velika Novosilka will allow them to secure the western flank during the siege and storming of the settlement and allow the Ukrainian forces to withdraw from these settlements south of Velika Novosilka. It can be considered with the Russian advances on the eastern flank that the Ukrainians cannot stop this siege unless they launch a counteroffensive, which they have limited capability of doing so with the ongoing Kursk offensive. Therefore, it is likely that the Russians will capture Velika Novosilka in the coming weeks. 
In the direction of Kuropova and the southern flank of the settlement, the Russians have advanced further within Yelisevitivka, pushing the Ukrainians to the central parts of the settlement after the Russians have now captured the eastern parts of it. With this, the Ukrainians are going to be pushed into the forest patches, which the Russians are already present within. The Russians would, from there, be able to hit any of the Ukrainian forces with throwing towards the next settlement, and the Russians will likely look to cut off the Ukrainian positions, force the withdrawal towards the city high, and hit them while they are on the move. At the same time, the Russians are storming Hanivka and Romanivka here west of Ilinka following the capture of that settlement, as they continue closing the pocket which was created south of Delnia. The Russians are slowly capturing the remaining Ukrainian positions within the pocket as they attack it from both flanks. To the north of Delnia, the Russians are storming the fortified positions of the Ukrainians south of Kurakhove, with the objective being to capture the apartment complex area in the southern flank of Kurakhove, with the Russian advances into the residential areas by the high-rise apartment complexes in the western parts of Kurakhove, the Russians will be able to flank the Ukrainian positions from the northern direction and southern direction in a combined strike and advance through the fortified positions to the east of the settlement, attacking it from three separate directions, forcing the Ukrainians to withdraw towards the apartment complex area, from which the Russians will be able to secure the apartment complex area in the southern parts of Kurakhove, which will allow the Russians to have a secure supply road from Dalinia in the south towards Kurakhove and the north, which will strengthen the Russian offensive operations towards the apartment complex area in the western parts of Kurakhove, following which the Russians will then push into the industrial area to gain full control over the settlement and push towards Shdashne in the western parts, as the Russians continue advancing along the fortified positions, catching further parts of it and moving towards expanding the pocket south of Dalinia towards Yantarne and Hihant, cutting off Uspenivka and Konstantinopolska. As the Russians continue their offensive operations to capture Kurahove in the center, the river line here in the south of Kurahove all the way up to Kostyantinopol. In the northern flank of Kurahove, the Russians have captured the remaining parts of Soria as well as the road connecting the northern parts of the settlement towards the north. With this, the Russians have aligned the front line in the north to a very straight line. The distance between the Russian positions near the front line and the highway connecting between Pokrovsk in the north and Kurahove in the south, going through the main road, is approximately 5 kilometers in the shortest areas here in the northern parts and 6 kilometers in the longest parts in the southern flank. And based on this, I was actually very curious as to see the reason why they made a even front line straightening it out. And I don't really have an answer to it. There are multiple possibilities. Either the Russians are planning a general offensive towards the main highway, or they'll do a combined strike across a wider front, or that they'll need to straighten out the front line before launching such an operation. Another possibility I was thinking of was whether or not the Russians were planning on simply widening the front, forcing the Ukrainians to do the same so they can't concentrate their forces to deal with the Russian push from which the Russians will look to push through and break through that area from one of the different areas along the front line where they can concentrate their forces in one of these directions. Or it could be to simply have a strong flank in the northern parts, push through in the south towards Shevchenko and then Andrivka, rather than storming ahead on, having a straight front line will allow the Russians to have a clearer overview of the area it's also only a single settlement here in this direction. There's also Petrov Pavlivka in the south. Generally, it's mostly open fields, not a lot of fortified positions for the Ukrainians, and therefore it will be difficult for the Ukrainians to launch a counterattack through these areas as they would be vulnerable to Russian artillery fire and reconnaissance. Therefore, it could be that the Russians are using this as a defensive position to then push through towards Andrivka. In either case, it is clear that the main efforts of the Russians are towards Velika Novosilka and Kurahove, where the objective of the Russians is to gain control over the southern section of the Donetsk region. Moving on further north, we have several Russian advances here in the Luhansk Kharkiv direction. The Russians captured the remaining parts of Kupenki, gaining full control over the settlement and the fortified positions of the Ukrainians. The farm area remains contested here in the southeast of Kopenki. In the northwestern direction of Peshitravneve, the Russians are storming Selenyehai along their forest lines, and with this, the Russians are within a kilometer of the settlement. 
the Russians continued offensive operations towards Borova from the eastern direction, while the northern direction has stalled during this month. The main efforts of the Russians have been focused around Kupiansk, Lushkivka, and settling the supply lines here to the east of Kruhlyakivka, so the Russians can continue supplying their forces near the front line, even during any muddy weather. In conclusion, what we're seeing in this update is that the Russians continue their offensive operations in the Luhansk Kharkiv direction. They've also managed to make significant advances within the Kudakova direction, both on the northern and southern flanks, and the Russians have managed to gain a foothold within Vilika Novosilka as the Russians get closer and closer to capture the southern region of the Donetsk region, and the offensive continues here in Donetsk. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out my YouTube membership and Patreon for additional content. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.